Safety Authority announces ban on 737 MAX 8s. ExxonMobil says thank you. And Kumul Telecom launches two-in-one retail shop in Port Moresby. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening, this is Friday's News. Thanks for your company. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority of PNG has issued a safety and operation directive banning any Boeing 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 aircraft to conduct any flight in PNG airspace from the 14th of March 2019, 3 p.m. local time. The reason being in the interest of safety and operation and to protect the public following the accident of an Ethiopian Airlines Boeing Model 737 MAX 8 aircraft on the 10th of March 2019. Adelaide Zurich-Skari with this report. PNG adds on to more than a dozen countries banning 737 MAX 8 aircrafts. This includes Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, China and Indonesia. With Fiji Airways and Samoa Airways the only two airline operators in the region that have 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 on their fleet. While Air New Guinea is expected to add four 737 MAX 8 in 2020 and 2021, on Monday, Air New Guinea Managing Director Alan Milan confirmed the order and also brushed off any scares. What's going on? However, we have the utmost faith in the Boeing product. Boeing have already been in contact with us. They're keeping us in the loop. Uh, the investigations for the Ethiopian accident are still ongoing, so until those are completed, we won't really know what the cause of it is. Uh, but we're certainly sure that if there's any findings or recommendations from that investigation, that'll all be fully incorporated prior to the aeroplanes being delivered to us. Meanwhile, the Ministry for Civil Aviation issued a media release that they are closely monitoring the announcement from a number of aviation regulators in more than a dozen countries suspending the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. The Civil Aviation Minister Alfred Manasse also directing the Director of Civil Aviation, Wilson Sagati, to contact Air New Guinea to seek further information on the intention to purchase the Force B737 MAX aircrafts. CASA Director Mr. Sagati also affirmed that Boeing has been in touch with Air New Guinea after both Lion Air accident and the recent Ethiopian airline accident. The statement stating that Air New Guinea also advised the Director that they continue to have the highest regard for Boeing products and will continue to work closely with them to keep abreast of any updates. While there is currently no 737 MAX aircraft operating in PNG, the Minister assured when they are introduced, CASA will ensure that a full type acceptance certification is done. Adelaide Surak Skari National, MTV News. People of Hela Province today witnessed two important projects that is hoped to improve living standards and benefit communities. Tari Airport will be upgraded at the cost of 55 million kina. The upgrade will see a two story terminal, new runway, and fencing. Minister for Civil Aviation Alfred Manasse, Hela Governor Philip Undialu and China Civil Engineering Company did their groundbreaking to signify groundwork to commence. The second project is the construction of electricity transmission and substation at Wabia. The electricity project is a partnership between PNG Power and Komol Petroleum Holdings at the cost of over 67 million kina. Nearly a thousand people gathered to witness the launch of the two projects. Papua New Guinea has a developing economy where economic growth is currently led by the mining and extractive industry sector. One of such is the PNG LNG project spearheaded by ExxonMobil PNG. Last night, ExxonMobil PNG hosted its sixth annual shareholders thank you event to thank partners from community groups, aid agencies, as well as the private and government sector for their continued partnership in PNG. Times past and some of you Acknowledging its partners, ExxonMobil Managing Director Andrew Berry says sustainable development can only be achieved through the collaboration of partners and in PNG. A wide range of economic and social programs are being implemented that continue to transform the lives of Papua New Guineans in the areas of health, education, business, skills, community development and environmental protection. Yeah, the, the hard work that is done is by the partners that we have in the community. There is so many needs in the community and we are not, and I have, the, the, 
my team makes my job so easy and so enjoyable in this area, right? We, we continued in 2018 of, of our you know, key focus areas that we've always had, you know, which is the women, education and health. And you're going to hear some of the stories around those and so I'm not going to get into any detail with respect to those, but we continued with the efforts on that and, uh, and we couldn't be prouder of, of, of the way some of those initiatives have continued to grow and improve. Stakeholders, NGOs, including some government and private sectors who have been partners with ExxonMobil since the start of the project operations, had stalled set up throughout the banquet hall to showcase their 2018 work in partnership with ExxonMobil. Stakeholders and partners thanked also ExxonMobil's significant investment of its ongoing partnership in ensuring that economic and social benefit drove the positive change within the country. And I really want to thank ExxonMobil for recognizing what is so important in this nation, yet so undermined. The potential that is in women and a girl. Action Mobile, you have brought to light that potential that can create something big from nothing. The PNG plant side communities has been nothing short of amazing. The communities that participated in the programs partnered through the funding of uh, ExxonMobil, partnership with organizations like um, Grassroots Soccer, has really provided a, a way forward in how we can be able to network with partners, but more so give opportunity back to community members. And these are community members. ExxonMobil will continue its ongoing partnership between the government, industry, NGOs, and civil society with an effort to drive economic interconnectivity and inclusiveness as the means to achieve development. Anit Kora, National MTV News. The merging of Telecom PNG and B-Mobile Vodafone has seen the birth of its first joint retail shop opened in Port Moresby today. Under Kumul Telecom Holdings, this will be the practice in all its shops nationwide, where products and services of both networks will be sold under one roof. The official ribbon cutting this morning signifies the steps both mobile companies are taking to work together as one big telecommunication provider in Papua New Guinea. The retail shop, which will be selling both telecom and B-Mobile products and services, marks the start of the merging. And there has been a lot of hard work and dedication put in by the technical arm of both companies for both networks to work as one. Today we have a large number of base stations, but we've got a plan to significantly increase those in the, in the, in the foreseeable future. There's no question that we as a national telco have a, have a charter to provide coverage for the whole country and services to all people. And, and that's something that's very, that the board is very serious about. Inside the shop, one side has been dedicated to the wireless broadband, while the other the sale of mobile phones. During the launching, it was announced that the 4G SIM promotion by Telecom PNG has seen the increase of customer base grow by 10,000 new customers. Under this promotion, a customer buys a SIM card for 10 kina and receives 10 gigabytes of data for a three-month period. From international cables, fixed line services, mobile services, the whole deal. We, 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 are, we are the national telco and, and we've got to look at ourselves as being in the number one position but also being number one in every piece. Since 2007, more Papua New Guineans have owned mobile phones and the numbers continue to increase throughout PNG. Thus, the merging aims to improve communication signals and internet rates for Papua New Guineans. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. Yo, with Friday's news, we have more of today's other stories when we come back from this break. Welcome back. The testing of water, food and beverages amongst others is expected to improve at Unitex National Analytical and Testing Services. This is made possible by new equipment donated by European Union at a cost of 2.4 million kina. 
Minister for National Planning Richard Maru commissioned the equipment in Leh today. This machine is used for promoting high level of food safety and quality. It can detect various pathogens, viruses and parasites in water, soil, food and beverages. Another is this Dennis meter, which allows to determine directly the specific gravity and density of any liquid and liquid products. These machines will be utilized by Unitech National Analytical and Testing Services in Lay. We are, uh, are focusing in the right direction and, uh, and our agricultural productivity is improving in order for us to sell these products overseas, they have to be meeting certain standards. And these standards will be uh, uh, um, known through the work that will be done through Natsol using these equipments that our uh, EU partners have been providing to us. The Minister for National Planning, Richard Maru, said the new lab equipment are world-class standard machines Mr. Maru said industries operating in the country should step up in producing products that meet world-class standards. Yeah. Help us not only to be able to provide the analytical testing we need to access markets like the EU, but also to train our staff, our people and our industries to produce to EU standards. These new lab equipment are funded by the European Union at a cost of 2.4 million kina and will strengthen trade in PNG. And indeed, I would say that Papua New Guinea leads the Pacific region in a strategy to integrate more into World Trade Organization rule-based trading system. This lab has been in operation since 1976. It will be accommodating the new equipment donated by European Union today. National Planning Minister Richard Maru challenged the Unitech Board and Management to have strategies in place to maintain the facilities and the equipment. Unitech's Acting Vice-Chancellor Dr. Ora Renagi said, apart from the funding the government gives, the Institute has plans to generate revenue and help maintain the facilities in Unitech. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. The Department of Personal Management today launched its 2019 to 2022 corporate plan. Speaking at the launch, Public Service Minister Elias Kapavoris stressed on the performance of public servants in the country and the need to collaborate in delivering this corporate plan. The launch ended with modeling of new uniforms for the DPM staff. The corporate plan was handed over to Chief Secretary Isaac Lupari, who then handed it to the Minister for Public Service, Elias Kapavore. Chief Secretary Isaac Lupari and Minister Kapavore unveiled the plague, which officially launched the 2019 to 2022 medium term corporate plan of the Department of Personnel Management. Secretary Lupari says it is now up to the public servants to work to see success of this corporate plan, as most times public servants tend to forget the responsibilities that come with their jobs. Part of the corporate plan focuses on more emphasis on the management of its corporate responsibility by preventing government agencies abusing their power especially in areas of awarding allowances and engagement of personnel, such as getting more than one individual on one position. Public Service Minister Elias Kapavore was very vocal on the performance of public servants in the country. He says, if everyone works together, the public sector can match the performance of the private sector. It's not only making appointments and that's it. I don't stop there. I will not waste my time here, Public Service Minister, or just making appointments. I want to see whether this is what we are appointing and making a difference. I want to see if they are actually performing and meeting the key performance indicators and the key results of courage the respective roles of responsibilities. To me, that's so important to me. That's so important to me. But we need to put everybody into an accountable process. This is an accountability process that we need to strengthen. And I like this because I, want, I, want, I like doing this. To me, anyone who performs, you continue to stay. And when person perform, there is no space in the public service. I don't fear 
signing up for somebody to actually uh, terminate them in the public sector. Mr. Kapavora says he is adamant to work with the national government in addressing lingering issues in public service and review some of the policies in the Department of Personnel Management. Patricia Chiamo, National MTV News. Now to a story that has the whole country of New Zealand in shock. The shootings at mosques there has dominated news broadcasts today. Bangladesh cricketers were on their way to the mosque but ended up fleeing on foot after hearing gunfire. They travelled to Christchurch to play the Black Caps in their third test, which was supposed to start tomorrow but is now being cancelled. As police rushed to the mosque, the Bangladesh cricket team fled through Hagley Park. They were meant to be playing a cricket test there tomorrow. Based on today's events, that's now been cancelled. To go and play sport now with this devastating news is, is not appropriate. But some of the Bangladeshi players and New Zealand players are, are affected and upset. The Bangladesh team bus had pulled up to the mosque so players could attend Friday afternoon prayers. With police already at the scene, they were told to lie on the floor of the bus. After hearing gunshots, they began to run. An official statement from Bangladesh Cricket says all players and staff made it back to their hotel safely. They remained in lockdown this afternoon, as did the New Zealand team who are also in Christchurch. They're all together um, and safe. Bangladesh's players quick to tell loved ones they were OK, but feeling very lucky. In 2009, the Sri Lankan team was targeted in Pakistan. More recently, the Black Caps have chosen not to tour there for safety reasons. But this sort of thing was never meant to happen in New Zealand. Right from the start. Um, we activated our security mechanisms uh, as soon as we heard there was, uh, there was problems. I don't think we've ever seen a situation like this in New Zealand. The ESPN cricket reporter who filmed the players' escape says the team is in no mental state to play cricket and they want to go home as soon as possible. Yeah. New Zealand cricket is doing all they can to help make that yeah, happen. After the break, we'll take a look at more stories making headlines overseas. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. A strong rebuke to President Donald Trump on Capitol Hill. Twelve Republicans joining Senate Democrats to pass a resolution blocking Mr. Trump's national emergency declaration. But they didn't have enough votes to override what will be a certain veto from the president. It was the latest sign of cracks in the president's wall. The joint resolution is passed. After a dozen GOP senators joined forces with Democrats to block Mr. Trump's national emergency declaration to redirect already appropriated money for his border barrier. The president is gearing up for his first veto, tweeting as only he can, in all caps, veto. Mr. Trump sounded as if he were warming up the veto pen earlier in the day. I'll probably have to veto. And... Uh, it's not going to be overturned, and we're going to have our whole thing. It's uh, very important. It's really a border security vote. It's pure and simple. It's a vote for border security. It's a vote for no crime. Even though there aren't enough votes to override a veto, Mr. top Murphy. White House officials have been lobbying Mrs. wayward Murray. Republicans for days, with the president tweeting, a big national emergency vote today by the United States Senate on border security and the wall. The southern border is a national security and humanitarian nightmare, but it can be easily fixed. Aides to the president dramatized their case by posting this sinister looking and sounding video of migrant crossings on the official White House Twitter account. But it wasn't enough for Republican senators like Mitt Romney, who insisted the president was trying to pull a fast one by going around Congress to get what he wants. Well, he'd rather have me vote uh, in a different direction, but I let him know that this for me is a matter of uh, defending the Constitution and the balance of powers uh, that is core to our Constitution. And, uh, and I believe he respects that. How are you? Trump ally Lindsey Graham led a small group of GOP senators to the White House barging in on a Trump family dinner Wednesday night in a failed attempt to broker a compromise. He said, I don't expect you to give up any power as president that, that you think is necessary. But uh, if you could find a way to sit down and bridge the gap here, prospectively, it'd be in everybody's interest. Democrats suggested Republicans are worried about defying the president out of fear of retaliation. He has been vindictive, contemptuous, calling out people who oppose him. So it's not an easy vote. The president's veto of the border resolution may clear the way for his national emergency declaration, but not for long. Mr. Trump's plan for his wall is almost certain to be tied up in the courts, forcing the White House to perhaps seek funding the old-fashioned way. 
through Congress. New videos obtained by CNN provide chilling insight into a mystery drone attack against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro last year. The world's first known attempt to kill a head of state with a retail drone purchased online and armed by hand with military-grade explosives. They thought it was fireworks first, but it was a drone bomb. A brazen assassination attempt against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The first bid to kill a world leader with commercial drone technology bought online. It could have killed everyone on the stage or dozens of civilians nearby if it missed. The crowd scattered and Venezuelans began to wonder what really happened. Was it a fake? Even now, the opposition leader Juan Guaido told CNN he condemned the attack and thinks Maduro staged it to get sympathy. It ends up making them look like victims, he said. I think this was something internal done by the government, and so definitely no, such options are not good. CNN has tracked down one of the apparent organisers of the attack who supplied these videos seen here for the first time to prove his role in what he claims was a genuine assassination attempt. Why did you plot to kill Nicolas Maduro? This is a peaceful protest movement. Why did you think an assassination plot was necessary? We have tried every peaceful and democratic way to bring an end to this tyranny that dresses itself as democracy. We have friends who are in custody, tortured. This was a hard decision. Were you not worried about potentially killing innocent people, flying a drone with that much explosive straight at a crowd? That was the risk we had to take. We cared about that, as the Venezuelan people are always the ones feeling the consequences. The drones, they say, were purchased online in the United States and brought over six months ago to this rented farmhouse somewhere in Colombia. We aren't showing you the details of how they say they made the bomb here, but they blew one up in a test. And in the remote countryside, they practiced the tricky bit. Flying the drones high enough to not be seen and then down at a steep and fast enough angle to hit their target. A garden tent here. They even try it at night in case that's when their chance to strike comes. Later, they say they dismantled the device to sneak it into Venezuela. Their videos show it being reassembled and then ready hours before the attack. A presentation days after the attack by Venezuela's interior minister confirms part of the attacker's story, including the path of the drones, which both detonated prematurely. The cell signal blockers that protect Maduro from attack had been switched off, the organizer said, but suddenly came back on, thwarting the attack. The U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, the morning after, thought it might have been faked. A pretext set up by the Maduro regime itself to something else. But U.S. officials briefed on the intelligence have since concluded the attack was a genuine attempt gone wrong. And separately, the organizer said he met with several U.S. officials three times after the attack. After, they set up three meetings which I imagine were to collect information to study the case. But it didn't go past that. And did they offer to help you try something like this again? Or were these meetings just about them finding out more about you? I think both. They wanted to get information and then we asked for things in return. They took notes on this and we asked if they would be able to help. Then they simply left with their notes and they never appeared again. CNN could not find proof these alleged meetings happened. A State Department spokesperson would not comment on the claim but to say... Our policy is to support a peaceful transition in Venezuela. Economica. Venezuelan officials said the plot, which shook their capital, was assisted by Colombia and the US, which both have denied. It unveiled a blend of lethality and ingenuity using technology that's terrifyingly simple to get. Up next, we we'll take a look at some sporting updates in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Right. 
Welcome to Chukai Sports. Team PNG for the 2019 Pacific Games will for the first time have a chief physiotherapist traveling with them to the Games. Matthew Natosh, who arrived in Port Moresby yesterday, started assisting the national physiotherapists carry out rehabilitation sessions with athletes that are training and preparing for the Pacific Games, as Team PNG is expected to leave for Samoa in June. Having worked in PNG for three decades, Matthew Natosh is now in the country and will be taking the role of chief physiotherapist for Team PNG to the Pacific Games. Natosh, who started his therapy sessions today with athletes from various sporting codes, says it's a great opportunity to meet Team PNG staff and to work together. We're here through the PNG Olympic Committee and the PNG Sports Foundation. Um, just screening some of our athletes in preparation for the Pacific Games so we need to ensure that our athletes are in the best possible condition so that's the idea of the screening and we're also looking at treating um, some of the chronic injuries that they have. He says when performing at an elite level there are always little things that could be done better and so identifying and correcting them are necessary. When we're performing at the elite level, there are always little things that we can do better. So that's what this is about, trying to identify those little things that we can do better and then correcting them. He says with a good knowledge base in place, it is really important that the team works together. We have a really good knowledge base here. Um, and you know it's that thing of we've all got something to learn it doesn't matter how long we've been doing things so it's really great that we can all work together and learn off each other and with Matthew here with the you know the experience that he has um, it's very very um, helpful for most of us because most of the things that he learned he's teaching us is specifics and this is what we needed so most of our efforts that um, that uh, he's seeing with us are the ones that are problematic. Natosh says athletes' responsibility should also be taken into account in terms of looking after their health and well-being. Like it's easy to come and see your massage therapist or your physio or your sports trainer and expect them to do all the work. But when you're not here, when you're in the home or training or in the village, wherever you are, you have a responsibility to look after your diet, you know, how you recover, you know, treatment of injury, your exercises. So, you know, to be honest, we just do a little bit. But it's really our athletes who have that real responsibility to look after themselves. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Pacific Sprint Queen and PNG's very own Toya Whistle says she is more than ready for the Pacific Games. This comes after over a year out of international competition, the main one being the Commonwealth Games. Sprint Queen Toya Whistle was suspended in 2017 following the Pacific Mini Games where Toya refused to go up for the medal presentation where Cook Island's Petty Taya was the gold medalist. It was a short clause and one the Sprint Queen did not take too well, resulting in a drastic measure being handed down by the PNG Athletics and supported by PNG OC, costing Toya an appearance at the Commonwealth Games. We caught up with Toya recently in West New Britain during the PNG Athletics Pacific Games trials. Things happen and yeah, I've been out for, for a year and now I'm back again. Uh, I moved up there last year, it's just a last minute decision and then I moved up there. It's, this year going to be my two years in Goroka now. And while the Sprint Queen is still in great form, her appearance at the trials was her domestic debut since the suspension. And she clocked in 11.57 in her first 100 meters and 11.59 in a later race. Not her best timings, but neither was it the worst. She will be passing through Port Moresby in the coming weeks on her way to Australia for some lead-up competitions before the Pacific Games in July. The sprinter gave her assurance that she will be at the Games. Oh yeah, you see me, I'm back on the track again. So uh, my uh, running, you know, fastest times and cutting has been a three competition for me and cutting all my times down. So looking forward for the South Pacific Games. And while she produced mixed results at the 2017 Pacific Mini Games, the Sprint Queen is still confident of her stance in the region. I mean, sometimes, you know, all the young ones come strong but you need to you know you know set up your mindset like you've done it for so many years and you need to put your mind put it all together to race so I'm not you know put, I, I'm not doubting myself that 
confident? I'm confident always. Uh, you see me back on the track in a piece more. Dini Rose Rico, National MTV Sports. The annual SP Sports Awards nominations that opened on February 5th will reach closure next Friday, the 22nd of this month. And the SB Sports Awards Committee is now making a final call out to the general public to make sure they nominate if they have not as yet in the next seven days. The SB Sports Awards nominations will close next Friday to allow the committee at least three weeks to deliberate before announcing finalists for each category. People can also vote for their favorite athlete from the top four categories through the FM 100's SMS voting for the People's Choice Award. We have 12 categories um, in the SB Sports Awards and if I can just quickly quickly run through them, that's the male athlete of the year, female athlete of the year, team of the year, national performance of the year, community sports initiative, the Westpac junior male and female athlete of the year, best, best sports person with a disability, sports official of the year, sports photo of the year, sports media award, and then the one that you mentioned is the People's Choice of the Year now. Not a public, including aspiring local and elite athletes as well as sporting bodies, are encouraged to nominate if they are yet to. Send in your nomination. Fill in a nomination form and you can pick that up at every um, SP Brewery office or at the PNG Sports Foundation office or PNG Olymp Olympic Committee office. It's also online. The SP Sports Awards recognizes PNG's sporting talent and achievements in the country and overseas. And Sports Foundation Southern Regional Manager and SP Sports Awards Committee member Ronnie Mayer highlighted the importance of this long-standing event. The Sports Awards uh, uh, has been the only one that is sponsored by SP Brewery throughout the Pacific. It's the only program that has gone around and uh, I can recall that only Fiji just only started last year but uh, according to sources that I received from Fiji, PNG has the best Sports Awards uh, program and events. So it is very important that all national federation executives identify the young people who are participating in all sports. Uh, also, we are appealing to the local communities uh, around the villages, whether you'd be uh, uh, in your club, wherever you are, uh, in the rural areas, please like, ensure there is a raw talent out there uh, who has that ability, please. There are 11 categories that you can always nominate for them. It is important to include supporting documents such as news articles, photos and other references with the filled out nomination form to validate a nomination. One big question that a lot of um, people ask um, every year is who can nominate and I'd like to take this opportunity to say that um, you yourself, if you're an athlete who believes that you know you achieved you know um, great things in sport last year, yeah fill in those nomination forms and Nominate yourself, fill in the form and send it to, through to us. So if you're on Facebook, we have a Facebook page, that's the SP Sports Awards. You can send your nomination forms through there. I think I've also mentioned you can drop it off at any SP Brewery office nationwide and then the PNG Sports Foundation office and the PNG Olympic Committee office. Yeah. The Sports Awards is on May 26th. Dina Rosrako, National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues with more after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. The SBPNG Hunters halves combination was an issue in their first match last weekend. This week, they play their first home match and hope to better their performance. The departure of the Boers brothers and Wartovo Puara Jr. has left the SP Hunters with a somewhat inexperienced half pairing. Coach Michael Marum has named Charlie Simon in 5'8", William Mone at halfback and Patrick Moria in the hooker position. The trio's combination was lacking in last weekend's round one match against Tweedhead. Last week game um, was well, more, you know, hard but first player combination with Mila Bilimno towards season with Mila Gosha. I think the uh, middle half for half we need to work more now. So game side we need to combination we need to like and side. Communication between the halves is important in setting up plays during a match. This is something they are working on. Last week, bit scrappy league we need to really 
lo combination lo mitla mitla no toto lo namel lo mitla ko lo distributi bal go gamso i think ba mitla billa mo lo test day training go sega ina billi mo lo this weekend game ba mo better mo this week they hope to better their performance and come out with a win in their first home match look forward lo lo good play game lo this weekend lo home ground lo gimbeg lo put in trust lo support us na sponsors come back again lo gimgom lo good play game lo la weekend lo one mistake we made make last week na policy map no amla gimgom lo good play game this weekend this weekend's team will see the return of Junior Rao on the wing. He missed round one due to suspension. His inclusion in the team is certainly a bonus. He will play his 17th game and hopes to score more tries from the eight scored last season. Since um, uh, Miller play, I want to play my best game to, uh, this week and at least put some points on the board to, to help the team and get a win for, for the home game. The SPPNG Hunters will take on North End Pride on Sunday at the Oil Search National Football Stadium at 3 p.m. Elijah Lovett, National MTV Sports. The 2019 NRL season has kicked off with a bang and on a high for Melbourne Storm running riot at Emmy Park. The Storm outfit came out on top, beating the Broncos 22 points to 12. The first few minutes of the initial game started out slow, but a sensational collection of offloads on the left saw the storm over the line with fullback Jerome Hughes going for goal. Hughes had big shoes to fill after the retirement of club legend Billy Slater, and he didn't disappoint with the first try of the season in just five minutes. Veteran hooker Cameron Smith missed the conversion and couldn't add the two points from the sideline. Controversial Brisbane prop Matt Lodge copped the first penalty of the season by taking out kicker Cameron Munster's legs at the end of a storm set. Minutes later, Broncos centre Jack Bird let the ball loose in a crushing tackle from Suliasi Vunivalu opening up a gap down the line for Curtis Scott to bring another four points home. Melbourne struck once again shortly after the start of second half with Kenny Bromwich charging over the line, receiving a perfectly timed pass from Munster, bringing the storm to a dominant 16 0 beautiful, beautiful Brisbane eventually came through courtesy of Corey Oates, who plonked the ball over on the left flank. Nicarima, Milford, Boyd, Bird for the corner. This is it. Essentially nowhere Melbourne yet. Oates built up the pressure, making it a double two minutes later, building on a defensive line after an offload from Jack Bird. Score again! Oh, Jesse Bromwich handed it straight to him! Jermaine Isako was on fire with the boot, kicking both conversions through, bringing the Bronx up 12 points to Storm 16. But it wasn't going to happen for the Bronx. Jesse Bromwich pulled off a sidestep in the Brisbane attack after an inside ball from Munster to bring the scoring to a finish at the 68th minute, with Melbourne Storm dominating the Brisbane Broncos 22 points to 12. Melbourne are starting on a winning note for 2019. They've been very, very good. Very professional as always. And that ends Chukai Sports. So, weather details for the next 24 hours when we come back. Chukai Sports. Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Bring out your umbrellas. We're expecting a bit of rain right across the country in the southern region. Rain showers and thunderstorms in Port Moresby, Daru, Kerama and Alotau. Also Popandita. In the Mamasa region, rain showers and thunderstorms in Leigh and Wau, showers in Medang, Wewek and Vanimo. 
In the New Guinea Islands region, rain showers in Loringa and Kebian, thundery rain in Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe, and some showers in Buka. And all centers in the Highlands region can expect some rain and morning fog following after. Strong wind warning, strong northwest winds of 25 to 34 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours causing rough seas and high sea waves. All small crafts and boats are advised to take necessary precautions before and after going out to sea. Ocean forecast for PNG Heavy rain and flood warning, heavy rain showers and thunderstorms causing flooding and landslides associated with the monsoon trough to be experienced in some areas of southern Momase Highlands and the NGI regions. Ocean forecast for PNG areas, uh, rather forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Karama, to Yule Island, to Hood Point, to Samare Island, with waters of Eastern and Western Milne Islands, including waters of New Ireland to New Britain, seas of 2 to 3 meters. Waters of Samare Island to Cape Vogel, to Finchhafen, with waters of Finchhafen through Vitias and Dampier Straits, to Siasi Island, to Long Island and Medang, seas of 0 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Medang to Bogia to Wiwak and Aitape to Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian borders, including waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 2.5 to 3 meters, and waters of Bougainville, seas of 1.5 to 2 meters. A look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea is moderate to rough with northwest to southwest winds at 20 to 34 knots. In the Solomon Sea is moderate to rough with clockwise winds at 29 to 34 knots. In the Bismarck Sea is moderate to rough with northwesterly winds at 20 to 34 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean sea slight to moderate with northeast to northwest winds at 10 to 20 knots. Weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And that's been the news, sport and weather for today, Friday, the 15th of March, 2019. On behalf of the entire MTV News team, a pleasant evening and a safe weekend. Good night.